Should I like put a blanket behind me so you can tell where my body is on this couch? No. No. Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney. Today we are going to do the Booktornet All Stars Charity Challenge created by Rachel Marie. I was tagged by Julia to do this challenge, so I will put her link in the description. She is absolutely a lovely person, and I would definitely recommend you following her and checking her out. On the other hand, Rachel Marie is also a lovely human being, and, and this charity challenge that she created is all about giving back to COVID-19 relief. And if you don't know, I personally am an ICU nurse and taking care of these COVID-19 patients on the regular. And honestly, I am so touched personally, but also so happy that Rachel Marie created this charity challenge. I think it's awesome of her and it's so, so sweet. So for this challenge, she created, I think it's 18 different books or authors that she kind of considers as Booktornet all-stars or books or authors that everyone should read. But she just created this little uh, board that I'll put right over here and that I will be checking off or as we all know, I'm pretty new in the booktube world, so probably not checking off a whole lot of things. But without further ado, let's just start going through the board and I will talk about whether I have or have not, why or why not, read or checked out these books or authors. Okay, so first on the board in the upper left hand corner is Angie Thomas and she is a fantastic author from what I've heard. Um, she has written The Hate You Give as well as On the Come Up. And obviously, I have both of these books here. They came in the mail not too not too long ago, um, so obviously I haven't read them yet, so I can't check that one off quite yet. Now obviously these are two books that a lot of people have read in the booktube community, and they are high on my TBR list for sure. Um, Angie Thomas, it seems like, writes about a lot of kind of some hard-hitting, tough-to-talk-about topics, but from what I hear, she does it in all such a beautiful way and a real way. So off the top of my head, I know that The Hate You Give is about a girl who grows up in a poor black community, but she attends school in a kind of more preppy private school, I believe. And so she kind of lives like a double life in a way and goes between those two worlds. And, and one day, one of her best friends gets killed by a police officer. And apparently the only person who can help solve this murder is Star, the main character. She's put in a really, really hard spot because her neighborhood is practically like a war zone right now with protests and everything like that. So I really like hard hitting topics and stories that cover things that are kind of uncomfortable to talk about. And it's really interesting to me to see how other people portray their thoughts on topics like that through their writing. So yeah, I mean, Angie Thomas is definitely high up on my list, but I have not gotten to her yet, so unfortunately I can't cross that one off. Okay, next on the board is Shatter Me by Tahiria Mafi, and it's somewhere. Found it. <laughs> the spine is still beautiful because I have not cracked it. <laughs> I know a little bit about Shatter Me series. Um, I know it's about people who have kind of superpowers in a way, and not much else. Um, I know that it's a super popular series, and it sounds like something I would be into. I know there's, I think it's a UK TV show called Misfits. It was on Hulu, and it's kind of giving me those vibes. If I'm completely off, then please tell me, but that's the kind of the vibes that I get from this book, and that show is like one of my favorites ever. It is so good. If you don't know it, you should. But unfortunately, I can't cross this off my list right now, but I do have the book, so I do plan on reading it at some point. Oh, next we have the queen herself, Leigh Bardugo, and we all know that she is my favorite. The Grisha Trilogy is on my other bookshelf. I'm not going to get it. But we have like Six of Crows, C Crooked Kingdom, King of Scars, Language of Thorns, and they're my favorite. I love the Grishaverse with my whole heart. Um, it's one of those worlds for me that really feels like home, you know what I mean? Like, I know the Grishaverse in and of itself, like, people have mixed reviews on it. It was the first, like, major fantasy series that I read after nursing school, so I was, like, trying to get back into reading, and it was exactly what I needed at that time. Like, yeah, the writing could have been better, and yeah, the story has its flaws, and yeah, some of the characters are not great. But it was great because it was exactly what I needed at, at that time of my life. So it'll always hold a good place in my heart, regardless of its flaws. You know what I mean? Obviously, yes. Let's check off Leigh Bardugo. Okay, next on the list is Cruel Prince by Holly Black. And I don't have it. I don't really know what it's about, even. I do know that it has, like, a problematic prince and it is in a fey world. That's all I have for you. <laughs> And I'm not like actively ignoring it, but I haven't actively 
seeked, seeked, seeked it out? I think that's fine to say. Will I read it? I don't know, maybe. Why should I? Should I? Tell me in the comments if I should check it out or not, if it's worth it. But as of right now, that is not getting checked off on the list. And same with the next one. And the next one is The Bone Witch by Rin Chepeko. And The Bone Witch actually does seem like something that I would really like. Now, from my understanding, it's like a dark fantasy coming-of-age story about a witch who can, like, raise the dead. And that is totally in my wheelhouse of something that I would be into. So, before doing this video, this book, and a couple others that we'll get to, um, weren't really on my radar until now. So, Bone Witch is now on my radar. I'm one for five right now. I'm not doing too well. But it's okay, because this is why we're here. We're documenting my book growth, and it's gonna be a great time. I'm so mad at the next one. <laughs> the next one is V.E. Schwab, and her books have been at the top of my TBR, but they just keep getting nudged down slower and slower, just because of, like, themed TBRs that I've been doing. She is the author of A Darker Shade of Magic, which I have literally right behind my head. It's, it's everything that I want to read. Like, I just have not had the theme TBR that I've been able to fit it in. It's like a historical London setting with a guy that can has this trench coat or something and he can like time travel in between different types of London. And there's like a black London, a red London, a gray and a white, I think. But it's literally exactly what I want to read like all the time. So I just need to pick it up and make it work in a very soon TBR because it is appalling that I, that I can't cross the E. Schwab off right now. Go back to your home. Okay, the next one is Cinder or like the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. And I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> the Lunar Chronicles is something that just does not appeal to me. I don't know. Just retellings of fairy tales in general just doesn't sound appealing to me, and there are just so many other things that I would rather pick up than that. So, like I kind of already mentioned, the Lunar Chronicles are retellings of fairy tales like Cinderella and things like that, but with like a sci-fi uh, fantasy twist to them. It just, it just doesn't sound like something that I'd like. And I'm sorry if that offends someone, but that's just me personally. It doesn't strike my fancy. The next one is Adam Silvera, and I also, guess, have not read any of his books either. One of his in particular is They Both Die at the End, and it is on my TBR. So we're learning things today. We're learning that if anything, this challenge is one, making me look like a fake booktuber, but also two, making me a more conscious booktuber of what I should be reading, <laughs> with a subclause of two, also reminding me of things that I don't want to read, and that's okay. But if you didn't know what They Both Die at the End is about, it's about two boys who get told that they have 24 hours to live, and it's about their last day on Earth, basically, and they spend it together. All right, the next one. Guys, we get to cross another one off. It is Cassandra Clare, and she is the queen of the Shadowhunters world series, you know? This is like really, this is like a really good spread. That's like, my arms are tired, but it looks nice, doesn't it? But yeah, so I have read the first two installments of the Mortal Instruments right now. Um, it is my first time through the Shadowhunters series because we all know I'm behind on the times, and that's fine. But this world in general, like the Shadowhunters world, uh, is something that really does appeal to me, so I am really enjoying it. Uh, the first two books I did really like. I think I gave them both like four out of five. Um, obviously some things are problematic, but all in all I really am enjoying the stories. Um, Shadowhunter World is basically set in, I believe it's New York City. I should know this, right? I'm two books in. <laughs> it's like a present day world that also involves Shadowhunters, which are demon hunters, as well as downworlders who are considered like the werewolves, vampires, fae, um, am I missing something? Maybe. In the Mortal Instruments in particular, we follow Clary, who is a girl who finds out one day in a very traumatic way that she is meant to be in the Shadowhunter world, but she has been sheltered from it her whole life. So she finds Jace, who we're not getting into their relationship because spoilers, and I am not here to ruin things. <laughs> Basically, Jace kind of takes her under his wing and they go on a bunch of like adventures because her mother gets kidnapped and they're trying to figure that out and she doesn't know who her father is, but then she finds out and it's just 
It's a wild ride. So I'm gonna cross it off. All right, so even though I was just happy, here we are again. Another one that I cannot cross off, which is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Um, I, it sounds like a book that I would have to really be in the mood for. So apparently it's about like this starlet that is hiring or goes to this specific editor, journalist, something to tell her life story and have her write about it. And we don't know why she chose this editor in particular to write her story. And also, why did she have seven husbands? What's that about? We don't know, but you find out. And it does sound intriguing. But on the other hand, her other book, Daisy Jones and the Six, um, I know that it's like a lot of people's favorite books, but that's a book for me um, that doesn't interest me at all. If you love Daisy Jones and the Six, and you think that I would, based on like anything that you've seen on my channel, or me, if you know me, <laughs> then please let me know, because as of right now, it's one of those books that like, I don't think I'll ever read it. <laughs> and I like, I feel the hate from people already. And, but with Daisy Jones and the Sick, I just need like a good elevator pitch from someone, and maybe I could be swayed into reading it. But right now, not on my radar, and I apologize. <laughs> So, can't cross it off, but I'm not writing it off. Okay, I'm a little sweaty. Anxiety. <laughs> okay, so the next one on the board is Lainey Taylor, and in Rachel's video she said that she's one of her most favorite authors ever, and I personally haven't heard of her, um, but that doesn't really mean much because I'm still like getting back into the book community in general, so I mean, take that with a grain of salt because she probably does write really, really good books. I just personally don't know of them. But she wrote A Strange the Dreamer, which I have heard of, but I didn't know that it was her book. You know what I mean? I'm bad with names, we all know this, so tying names to different things sometimes isn't the easiest for me. But I don't know what it's about, so let's go check it out. Goodreads. Oh, it's these books? Daughter of Smoke and Bone? Oh, okay. I don't- I- these- <laughs> these covers? <laughs> I hate these covers. I'm intrigued. Daughter of Smoke and Bone actually sounds sounds kind of cool. Okay. I just marked Strange the Dreamer as want to read as well because that also sounds interesting. So thanks Rachel for putting this author on my radar. That's really cool. Next on the list we have Illuminae by J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman and we crossing it off guys because this is one of my favorite series ever. It is something that I recommend to literally everyone because it is not only one of the greatest stories I've read, but also the most fun I've had while reading any stories ever. Um, it's told in like mixed media, so you have to sometimes like turn the book to to like actually read the story. And just the, the story in general is just gripping, honestly. It is a sci-fi, they call it like a, a sci-fi space opera, but like I don't really understand what space opera means. Um, I'm guessing just like a space sci-fi drama type book. And I guess that's accurate, but like, I don't like how it sounds personally. <laughs> so I just personally say sci-fi fantasy, which I think is fine. Um, but regardless, this is one of my favorite series ever. In Illuminae, we follow Katie and Ezra, who had just broken up at the beginning of the story, but then their planet gets kind of bombed and attacked, and they are forced to flee the planet and take refuge on these ships and get away from the other people. I can't tell you exactly, like, who they are and things, but when they're trying to get away from this group of people, like, a bunch of stuff ensues. Like, the biological warfare disease, like, comes into play. There's a bunch of, like, political struggles within all of these different ships of these refugees, as well as a crazy AI that is controlling one of the ships, the Alexander. And honestly, like, just read it, please, because so much happens that it's really hard to summarize it without giving anything away. And that's the last thing that I want to do because these are books that you are meant to experience and not only just read. It's that good. So let's mark it off. All right, next on the list is Scythe by Neil Schusterman. And it is also sitting right behind my head, right next to A Darker Shade of Magic. And guess what? I haven't read it either. 
But again, that doesn't mean that I don't want to because I have it, so I obviously want to read it. This was one of the series that I ordered first when I first started to get back into reading. It's a dystopian utopia, I believe, is what I've heard people describe it as. And the back of the book that's like Scythe's Commandments and seeing this is really what got me like pulled in. It says, Thou shalt kill, thou shalt kill with no bias, bigotry, or malice afterthought. Thou shalt grant an anum of immunity to the beloved of those who accept your coming. Those shall kill the beloved of those who resist. And honestly, sounds dark, sounds intriguing, and sounds like something that I would like. So no, I can't cross it off, but it is on my list right next to A Darker Shade of Magic, and I will read both of them ASAP. Okay, so I'm doing absolutely terrible, but it's fine. Like I said, we're learning a lot today. <laughs> However, the next one is Sarah J. Mass, and I can cross this one off because last month I read Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood, and I had some thoughts on it, if you can't tell. I will be surprised if this isn't in my like top five or top ten favorite books of all time forever. I did a reaction vlog throughout my reading it. I'll put a link in the description because as that video continues, it just unravels and it I think I thought it was hilarious because this book was absolutely wild. But Sarah J. Mass is definitely one of those authors that you hear about quite often on BookTube. And before Crescent City came out, I wasn't really interested in any of her books. Like I know Court of Thorn and Roses is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but as the story goes on, obviously it changes into something else entirely. And if you remember a couple minutes ago, I said I'm not really into retellings. But look what I have. <laughs> I got it purely because I loved Crescent City so heckin' much, so it is only fitting that I at least give her other books a shot. The next one is An Ember in the Ashes series by Saba Tahir. And I don't know what it's about, so let's go back to Goodreads. So it is a story set in ancient Rome, and there is Laia who is a slave and Elias who is a soldier. Neither of them are free. Laia's brother gets arrested for treason, so she has to make some decisions, and she makes a deal with the rebels who promise to rescue her brother, and she spies on the Empire within the military academy where she meets Elias, and they soon realize that their destines are intertwined, and I think that sounds really good. Um, Mark does want to read. How do I not know about a lot of these books? I don't know. Next on the list we have Seanan McGuire, which if you followed me before this, you know that I accidentally said her name as Sean McGuire multiple times in my earlier videos, and I am now aware that it is Seanan. I just can't read, apparently. <laughs> Seanan McGuire has written the Every Heart a Doorway uh, Wayward Children series as well as Middle Game. I actually am filming a really fun video with Kayla about Middle Game later tonight, actually. He's out in the backyard building some bedside tables for our neighbors. Um, yeah, fun fun video to come for Middle Game. And following that fun video, it's going to start to become a serialized video series <laughs> on my channel. But yeah, super excited about that. Middle Game is awesome. Shauna McGuire's writing style is unlike anything I've ever experienced. Uh, the way that she writes, it's like super dark and eerie but so compelling. The Every Heart or Doorway, obviously I read it already and loved it. I am so excited to continue this series. I love how small they are. It's like little bite-sized chunks that you could just like read in one sitting. And just the overall like idea of these books are super interesting to me. Um, it's basically about kids who find these doorways to realms or other worlds that they feel most comfortable in and they find as their home. But somehow they get kicked out of those worlds and they find themselves back in the real world. So their parents send them to the Eleanor West's Home for Wayward Children and it's kind of like a school where these kids go to kind of come to terms and deal with what has happened to them and why they can't get back to like their home world, you know what I mean? There is obviously like a dark undertone of the book but it's also very whimsical Next on the list is The Poppy War by R.F. Quang, and this is another one that I have not read, nor did I know anything about it until about two minutes ago when I just read the synopsis on Goodreads. But I did already mark it as want to read because it does sound like something that I would also like. When reading the synopsis on Goodreads, it kind of is giving me like the atmospheric vibes of The Book Thief uh, in a sense of kind of like a nitty gritty uh, type story. Not saying that they are relatable in any way, but that's just like the vibes that I get from it. And I really do enjoy that kind of like dark, serious tone of the content matter that I am reading, but it also has like a twist that she has like a nearly mythical, like unearthly power of the art of shamanism. And that wasn't, I wasn't expecting that to come around in the synopsis, 
um, which really intrigues me. I think that this book kind of just jumped up a, a couple couple rings on my TBR of things that I would be interested in. So that's cool, but obviously can't check it off. So moving on is the next one is To All the Boys That I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. And I know this is a Netflix series, I believe, which I haven't watched it or read the books. I personally am not a huge romance person. When I was looking at books that I wanted to read for the Asian Readathon, this one obviously came up and I almost bought it, but I didn't because I am not sure if it's something that I would really, really enjoy. This is one of those books, much like Daisy Jones and the Six, where if someone gave me a really good elevator pitch to it, that maybe I would consider reading it. But as of right now, I'm not super interested. So if you love it and you think that maybe it's worth get me giving it a shot, then please let me know down below and maybe I'll think about it. All right, so apparently I got five out of 18 and there's room for improvement. That's what this is all about, right? <laughs> But ultimately, this challenge is not about a scoring system. It's about giving back to the COVID-19 relief. And a big thank you to Rachel Marie for putting this challenge together and also to Julia for even tagging me to do this video. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. I found a lot of new books that I'm really interested in and also realized some books that like I still am not interested in, which is fine. Everyone has their opinions. Yeah, let me know down below your score, how well you did. And I don't know right off the top of my head who has and hasn't already done this challenge, so I'll look through it and then I'll put some people down in the description of who I'd like to tag to do it next. It is ending on my May 31st and it is May 23rd right now. But until next time, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video. I appreciate all your support and as always, happy reading.